Welcome back, listeners, to Sandman Stories Presents, a folklore podcast where I read you to sleep or until the next story. I'm your host, Dustin. Today we are back in Louisiana with the Creole folk tales written down by A. Fortier. Brother Rabbit is again the main character of the story, and this time he is joined by the earthworm and the elephant. And we will hear about why rabbits are deathly afraid of worms. Okay, let's begin. Brother Rabbit and the Earthworm Everybody knows that every year in the month of May, Brother Rabbit is sick. It is an earthworm which is in his neck, biting him and sucking his blood like a leech. That makes him weak, weak. And for a month, the worm holds on to him, hooked in his neck before it falls off. Rabbits believe that when they lie down in the grass, the worms come out of the grass and climb on them. They are, therefore, very much afraid of worms, and if they see one, they will run as if they had a pack of hounds after them. If I tell you that, it is because I want to relate to you a story about Brother Rabbit and the worm. It was a day in spring, the little birds were singing, the butterflies were flying about from one flower to another, It seemed as if all the animals were rendering thanks to God for his kindness to them. A little earthworm was the only one which was crying and complaining. He said he was so small he had neither feet nor hands nor wings and was obliged to remain in his hole. The little birds, the lizards, and even the ants were troubling him and eating his little ones. If God would make him big and strong like the other animals, then he would be content, because he would be able to defend himself, while now he was helpless in his hole. He cried and cried, and said that he would be glad if he belonged to the devil. Hardly had he spoken when he saw the devil at his side. Well, I heard all you said. Tell me what you want. I shall grant it to you and you will belong to me when you die. What I want? Yes. I want strength. I want to become big, big, and beat everybody who will come to trouble and bother me. Give me only that, and I shall be satisfied. That is all right, said the devil. Let me go. In a short while you will be content. As soon as the devil had gone, the worm found himself big and strong. The change had come suddenly, and his hole had become large and as deep as a well. The worm was so glad he began to laugh and to sing. At that very moment, Rabbit passed, and he was terribly frightened. He ran until he was unable to go any further, and when he stopped, he whistled, Phew! He said, Never was I more frightened. I shall never sleep again as long as that big earthworm remains in this country. If I had not been so foolish as to boast that I could beat the elephant, I could go to him for help. It is Brother Bookie who told on me, but perhaps, if I speak to him, I shall be able to fix up the matters. I must try to make them meet and fight, and perhaps I shall get rid of both of them at the same time. Oh, it would be a pretty fight. Let me go and see the elephant, or I won't be able to sleep tonight. Besides, the earthworm said that he would fix me. I can't live that way. Good gracious, what am I to do? Let me arrange in my head what I am going to tell the elephant in order to please him. He went on until he met the elephant. He bowed very politely, and the elephant did likewise and asked him how he was. Oh, I am very sick, said Brother Rabbit. I shall come to try my strength with you another time. I think I can beat you. You are a fool, said the elephant. Go away. I don't want to harm you. I take pity on you. I bet that I can still beat you, said Brother Rabbit. All right, whenever you want. A little later, but as I know that you are good, I've come to ask you a favor. What is it? 
It is to help me, to give me a hand to carry lumber to build my cabin. Let us go right off if you want. Brother Rabbit, who had carried his axe with him, cut down a big tree and said to the elephant, Take it by the big end. I shall raise the branches and we shall carry the tree to the place where I wish to build my cabin. The elephant put the tree on his shoulder without looking behind him, and Brother Rabbit climbed into the branches and let the elephant do all the work. When the latter was tired, he would stop to rest a little, and Brother Rabbit would jump down and run up to the elephant to encourage him. How is it that, brother, you are already tired? But that is nothing. Look at me, who has been working as much as you. I don't feel tired. What? That is mightily heavy said the elephant. Let us go, said Rabbit. We don't have far to go. The big animal put the load on his back again, and Brother Rabbit appeared to be lifting the branches. Whenever the elephant would not be looking, Rabbit would sit on a branch and say, A little farther. Go to the right. Go to the left. At last they came to the hole of the earthworm, and Rabbit told the elephant to put down the tree. He let it fall right upon the worm who was sleeping. The latter pushed out of the tree as if it were a piece of straw, and coming out he began to insult the elephant. Brother Rabbit went to hide in a place where he could see and hear all. The elephant lost patience and struck the worm with his trunk. The worm then climbed up on the back of the elephant, and there was a terrible fight for more than two hours until they were both nearly dead. The worm finally hid in his hole and the elephant lay down dying. Brother Rabbit mounted upon him, pulled his ears and beat him and said to him, Didn't I tell you I was going to beat you? Oh yes, Brother Rabbit, I've had enough. I am dying. Rabbit then left him and going to the worm's hole, he broke his head with a stick. Now, he said, I am rid of both of them. A little later, Brother Rabbit met Brother Buki and told him how he had made the elephant and the earthworm fight until they had killed one another. You see, my friend, when two fellows are in your way, you must make them fight. Then you will always save your skin. The End Brother Rabbit, you are always causing trouble. I hope that you never change. I thought it was funny how he told the elephant that he would beat him, but then he said, uh, but first, come help me build my home. I'm really enjoying these stories, and I hope you are too. We'll have plenty more of these coming up. And the podcast shout-out is to A Few Bad Apples podcast. Dr. Cat created this podcast in June 2020 after seeing consistent media coverage of people who were victims of excessive force, which oftentimes led to death. It inspired her to make a change and to start keeping the stories alive. Each month, she brings forth a new story with interesting angles to highlight that there is an absolute need for reform within the police departments across the country. I like how she holds up a mirror to those who should be serving and protecting and are failing to do so. And if you like her podcast as much as I do, go and give her a listen, a rating, and a review. And the listener shout-out is to Denver, Colorado, the Mile High City. When I was young, Denver was famous for Dikimbe Mutombo, the Congolese American Center for the Nuggets. He was really famous. I may have been through the city when I was a teenager, but I don't really have any strong memories. Um, it was just during a family trip. Denver is also the ancestral lands of the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes. And if I have any Cheyenne-speaking listeners who want to approve my pronunciation, I wholly welcome it. Anyway, Hahu and Natasev Haot. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>